The main accelerator of the Nika accelerator complex is the heavy ion superconducting synchrotron known as the nucleotron. It was created in 1993 as part of the so-called project of magnetic system modernization of the synchrophasotron. It was supposed to substitute the synchrophasotron in terms of all of its main characteristics. Unlike the synchrophasotron, the use of superconducting magnets led to a drastic reduction in the size of the magnetic system and to a five-fold reduction in the electric power consumption. That means the beams generated at the nucleotron turned out to cost five times less than at the synchrophasotron. The first years of experiments at the nucleotron were carried out only on an internal target, while the runs of the synchrophasotron and the nucleotron were conducted in turn. In the year 2000, the slow beam extraction from the nucleotron was realized, followed by the first extraction of the polarized deuteron beam from the nucleotron, which was achieved in 2002. Thereafter, the nucleotron was, in fact, capable of taking over all of the tasks that were previously performed by the synchrophasotron, which, in turn, was decommissioned. In 2007, a modernization of the nucleotron accelerator complex was undertaken, during which the vacuum conditions in the accelerator chamber were improved, which was very important for heavy ion acceleration. A new magnetic power supply was constructed, or rather reconstructed, which made it possible to sustainably work at a maximum designed magnetic field value in the magnets. Several runs on the heavy ion acceleration were held with the heaviest ions accelerated at the nucleotron, xenon ions, having an atomic mass greater than 100. The only restriction in relation to the variety of ion types accelerated at the nucleotron was, thus far, the injection chain. I have told you about the emerging heavy ion injection chain and about the light ion injection chain. Nowadays, a light ion injection chain is used to accelerate heavy ions. However, the relation between the charge number and the mass number of the ions needs to be greater than one-third. It is a rather hard task to fulfill in the source of particularly heavy ions. Besides heavy ion acceleration, the acceleration of polarized beams is carried out at the nucleotron. I showed you the structure of the injection chain with a source of polarized particles. Up to now, two runs on polarized deuterons have been conducted. And for the first time in the history of our lab, the acceleration of polarized protons had been carried out at the accelerator complex. Since 2000, a slow extraction system has been operating at the nucleotron. The diagram in the slide below depicts the structure of slow extraction. The duration of an extraction can amount up to 20 seconds. The quality of the extracted beam is fully satisfactory, which is enough for physicists. This accelerator can accelerate considerably intense beams. In general, any accelerator works better when accelerating intense beams. Its task as part of the Nika complex is to accelerate around 1 billion gold nuclei. To date, the maximum beam intensity that has been reached at the accelerator is around 3 times 10 to the power of 11 nuclei of deuterium. And so far, the intensity of accelerated beams has rather been defined by physicists' requests and not by accelerators. The oscillogram shows the dependency of the accelerated beam current in the acceleration cycle. It also shows the magnetic field cycle and the readings of the induction current sensor in millivolts. By all accounts, the nucleotron is a fully modern facility. Its expected service life is long enough to provide the Nika complex with beams approximately until the year 2035. Nika's principal experimental facility is the two collider rings, which operate in storage mode. They obtain beams from the nucleotron and form beams of the required intensity. 
Then, with the help of the high-frequency system, the beam is broken into short bunches, and a collision of these bunches takes place at two collision points. To optimize the combined mode of the nucleotron and the collider, the latter provides a mode of slow acceleration or deceleration of a beam. The two collider rings are vertically spaced, they are located in parallel planes. For the movement of beams in the opposite direction, two aperture superconducting magnets are used. The distance between the median planes is 32 cm. Inside the two long lineal sections, the superposition of the beams, moving in the opposite directions, takes place. In the center of the lineal sections, the collision of the bunches takes place. This is where the detectors are located, a multipurpose detector for research in relativistic nuclear physics at the first collision point, and at the second, a detector for research in spin physics. The main task, and perhaps the main challenge, of the Nika Collider is to ensure the high efficiency of conducted research at a very low level of collision energy, which has probably never been obtained before. Before the creation and development of the Nika complex, the developments in physics and technologies had followed a path of increasing the energy of colliding particles. The higher the energy, the more progressive a facility was considered to be. As it turns out, in that race for high energies, physicists overlooked a very interesting research field that had potential for rich discoveries in physics. The Nika Collider is supposed to work in exactly this mist field. This area corresponds to the formation of maximum achievable density of the matter at the particle collision. The temperature of the object, nevertheless, won't be high, but this complex state of matter promises the possibility of new discoveries. The goal of providing high productivity, if we speak in terms of accelerator language, is limited to the task of obtaining a high luminosity of the collider. At the Nika Collider, we expect to obtain luminosity at the level of 10 to the power of 27 per square centimeter per second. It is almost the same luminosity generated by the Large Hadron Collider at CERN at the collision of lead ions with an energy level of 3.7 tera electron volt per nucleon. Our collider will have three orders of magnitude less energy, but despite the difficulties with the impact of the cell field of the beam, we expect to obtain the same luminosity. For the experiments with polarized beams, the luminosity level is more or less eligible for modern facilities. To obtain high luminosity, the Nika Collider applies the method of beam cooling, which is its principal innovation as compared to other facilities developed so far. Without the cooling application, one could neither accumulate an intense beam, nor obtain a long lifetime of the luminosity. One of the methods of cooling, planned to be used on the collider, is the well-developed method of electron cooling, which originated in Russia. Now an electron cooling system is being designed at the Butkut Institute of Nuclear Physics in Akadim Gorodok. The second cooling system that the collider is expected to have is the system of stochastic cooling. Neither the Soviet Union nor the Russian Federation holds any experience in the creation or operation of such systems. To learn this method, a test channel of stochastic cooling has been created on the nucleotron. Stochastic cooling consists of a receiving device, which measures beam parameters, a feedback line which converts the signal, and a kicker, a device affecting the beam. Here you can see the assembly stages of the stochastic cooling system, which was created by means of close collaboration with the Julich Research Center in Germany. In March 2013, the first cooling of deuteron beams was demonstrated at the nucleotron accelerator. Thereafter, physicists conducted a number of experiments on grouped beams consisting of bunches, as well as on deuteron and carbon beams. 
In the nearest future, similar experiments are planned on heavy ion beams.